For whatever reason, my Apple on front camera, when I record, it doesn't record the first like few minutes of sound. So it like muffles it. So that's why you're gonna see me sitting here. Good evening and welcome to 180. My name is Patty. I'm coming to you live, well, recorded live from another wall. This time it's pink, the peach, peachy pink. I don't know. Um, and before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and also follow along with us on IG. This evening, uh, I thought we could play a game called Take Me Away. Ooh, I, was, I had a lot of dairy, so my pitch is off. So basically, um, it's just me and you taking a moment to think about three places we would love to go visit. And if like money was no object, I would wanna go see the Northern Lights, see the little colors and the specs, um, see how it looks in person. It's probably underwhelming in person to be honest. I still wanna go. I would like to go to um, one of those over the beach water um, resorts where you wake up and you basically be swimming in the ocean bomb. I am a water child. I am an islander through and through. Yes. So I would like to go somewhere I can see penguins from afar. I like in their natural habitat. <laughs> habitat? In their natural habitat. Like, but in Chile probably. Um, or yeah, Chile. Because like I saw a map and they're like in Australia. But I don't, the coffee's bad there. And then they're in Antarctica. But I get hives in the cold, so that doesn't work either. So chili sounds fine. I, they got wine. Oh, I shouldn't be talking about wine on this. Um, they seem like they got good food. I think I'll take chili, and then I can see penguins. That'd be fun. Hey, so what are three places you'd like to go visit? Maybe share them in the comments. Um, but tonight we're gonna continue on with the series relationships. Pretend that's a card. You know, just lean in, listen. If you want to take some notes, probably take some notes, get a notebook, some paper, and just take a moment. So, enjoy. Jess and I'm the 180 student ministry coordinator here at his house children's home if you hear any jingling in the background that would be my dog Jackson just ignore him because he doesn't know how to stay still while I'm recording this is probably like bless you anyway Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, wow, I haven't seen that lady in a minute before. Where has Miss Jess been? Well, let me tell you the journey I have been on over, I'd say maybe the last uh, few weeks. Um, yeah, uh, it includes a uh, hospitalization, uh, includes a gnarly surgery. Um, so um, I had a uh, disc replacement surgery done Ended up feeling pretty bad after that. Uh, ended up getting uh, uh, hospitalized for uh, about eight days. Um, and I guess the, the loose diagnosis is hydrocephalus, which is basically this um, increased uh, in, you know, uh, spinal fluid pressure um, in my body. Um, I think I'm floating between like 31 and 35. Um, for the pressure and you should never be over 20 so needless to say it's a problem um, so um, after all that and a bunch of tests um, and whatnot I finally got to go home they gave me some medication so I'm kind of well on my way 
Um, every day it gets a little bit better. I finally stopped puking. It's the little things. And I'm eating again, so it's great. Um, I also lost like 20 pounds, so like I said, it's, you know, the little things. But uh, definitely keep me in prayer um, during this season. You know, I'm still not quite out of the woods yet. But uh, I've definitely been missing you all and miss doing these messages and videos. And, um, you know, can't wait to, you know, get together physically with everybody soon. Speaking of which, talking about soon, um, we're definitely well on our way um, at his house. Um, there were a few factors in us uh, uh, meeting physically. One, namely, you know, with everything with COVID. Um, and two... Um, our service room is currently being renovated. So for those of you who have been to an actual physical 180 service at his house, um, you know, we definitely make do with that room, but uh, it's definitely been in need of some updates. So they finally got those updates. They did, they repainted the walls, redid the floors, um, and uh, put up a TV ceiling fans for when the AC inevitably breaks. Um, and I think there's surround sound in there now. So that's neat. Um, but all that should be wrapping up um, this month and uh, hopefully within by next month or maybe even December, you know, in time for our Christmas party, we'll be back together again. So super excited for that. Um, so those are your updates about Miss Jess. Uh, yes, I'm alive. Here I am. And um, about, you know, us finally meeting physically again. So just keep that stuff in prayer. But let's go ahead and get into tonight's message. Now tonight, um, last week actually, we had Mr. Adam kick off our new series entitled Relationships. And this new series um, is all about shifting our mindset on what we know about relationships. So last week, Mr. Adam, he spoke about families, all right? So uh, this, uh, tonight, what we're going to be talking about is about friends. Um, Gary Smaley, I'm going to just say his name like that, um, He's an author of several different relationship books, and there's this quote by him, and he says this, life is relationships. The rest is just details. Life is relationships. The rest is just details. Now, we know that relationships are all many of us think about. You know, it affects all of us. You know, you can call yourself an introvert, an extrovert, whatever, still relationships affects all of us. And for a lot of us, it's a lot of what we think about. So tonight, we're going to be talking about understanding our friends and everyone else better and who they really are. So tonight, like last week, you know, we talked about family. This week, we're talking about friends. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to get right to it. Father, I just want to thank you for tonight. Thank you for... Um, just another day of life, uh, breath in our lungs, Lord. Um, thank you for just um, helping me through this season and getting me to this point to being able to do messages again, Father. Um, I pray that everybody else is safe and doing well health-wise, Lord, and I pray that you would continue to keep everybody safe. Lord, I pray now that you would just give us um, just the the time to focus, settle down, Soften our hearts and open our ears to what you have to share with us today. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise all in your son's name. And everybody said, Amen. Awesome. So, let me go ahead. We're talking about friends, but let me go ahead and ask you a question. All right. How many of y'all have been to the zoo? All right. How many of y'all been to the zoo? Raise your hand. All right. I've been to the zoo. Um, metro zoo here although i think they call it something else now but whatever it's kind of like you know uh was it a uh, hard rock stadium it's had about like five names since i can remember since it was like joe robbie don't make fun kids okay i might have dated myself but don't make fun but uh but yeah i've been to a zoo all right now 
Do you ever see animals mixed with other animals? Here's an example. Do you see like lions mixed with the gazelles in the same like enclosure? No, <laughs> the answer is no. All right, you'll see different species maybe of like the same animal. Like, you know, I think of like the monkey enclosures and you'll see different like kind of monkeys, but you're not gonna see like a carnivore and the thing that they eat the most in the same enclosure because inevitably there's gonna be conflict. See, in the jungle, nearly every animal has its natural enemies, which is why when we see them in zoos, we see them separated from each other. Um, and honestly, you also see them separated from the humans that pay to come and see and look at them. You know, and I think that's kind of important. Like if you've ever been to a zoo, you'll notice, you know, either there's glass, you know, between the humans and the zoo animals, or you'll see like this big moat, like this huge uh, kind of drop in between you and, you know, and the animals um, for a good reason or else things like this might happen. <laughs> or this might happen. Oh Oh my god! Oh my god! Now, humans supposedly are more developed and are able to mix uh, with each other without hurting each other. Supposedly. All right? But getting along with everyone without hurting or hurting, uh, without getting hurt or hurting others is a lot harder than it sounds. Okay? Like, for me, you know, when we're talking about like struggling to understand someone who might be different from you, I mean, man, I can, I can only think of like countless stories, like especially in school or um, like if you've ever been in a group project, everybody understands what it's like to be in a group project and there's just that one person that you just do not click with and you're just constantly butting heads. Um, or even like, even on sports teams, there are some of you who like play on like a basketball team or a football team or whatever sports team. And you're like, man, you know, don't, don't put me up against that person in a scrimmage because I'm going to throw an elbow kind of thing. You know, you know, yeah, we're on the same team, but you know, I might, you know, check them a little bit. Um, I've never done that. Never, ever, ever. Um, maybe, you know, possibly. Anyway, but, you know, I'm sure we can all relate to that one person. If I ask you to think of that one person that you just really struggle to understand and may even at times just avoid because you're like, man, I don't have time for that drama. I'm sure we can all think of somebody. It's so easy, honestly, for all of us to look at people through our own eyes and our own understanding. But here's the thing, all right? And lean in on this, here's the thing. We are all different. We are all different. We can all agree on this, we are all different, all right? Now, there's nobody, you know, there's nobody who acts like me, there's nobody who, I, I don't think so, like looks like me or dresses like me or behaves like me or has the convictions like me. We are all different, all right? We all are so different that we cannot expect people to think the same way as us. We can't expect people to deal with conflict the same way as us. We can't expect people to have the same list of priorities as us. We can't expect people to have the same cultural background as us. And the list goes on and on. Expectation destroys relationships. Expectation destroys relationships. What does that mean? Ex you know, instead of expecting everyone to think and act like you, we need to shift our focus 
to what God says about each of us as individuals. All right, so tonight, simply hear this. This is straight from the Bible out of Psalm 139, verses 13 through 14. Scripture says this, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit them together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It is amazing to think about. So what is this verse saying? This verse is saying that basically God in all his intentionality made all the delicate inner parts of my body. So down to like that little freckle that you may have right there or every strand of hair that you have on your head, God very intentionally and meticulously created that part of you. Put it this way, all right? In this verse, it says uh, that you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit them together in my mother's womb. Knitting, like think of it like actual knitting, like needle point, you know, needle and thread kind of thing, knitting. For those of you who can do that, kudos to you. I had a friend try to teach me how to knit and I don't have the patience for that, which is important to note. Because the fact that the God of the universe has the patience and intentionality to knit you should tell you something. But think of it like this. Knitting requires a plan. Knitting requires a plan. All right. How many stitches? Which kind of stitches? And which color of yarn to use when? It requires different stitches in yarn working together to form something beautiful. So those of you who are out there who know how to knit, you know, think of that illustration. That it takes so many, it takes a plan, it takes intentionality, it takes so many different pieces working together to make something beautiful. And that's what God did for each and every one of you. God has made each one of us with an extremely complex and beautiful plan. You were never meant to look the same. You were never meant to look like your friends. You were never meant to look like your parents. You were never meant to look like your relatives. You were never meant to look like the celebrities on TV. You were meant to look like you because God made you with a complex and beautiful purpose. He had a plan for you from the beginning. A plan just for you, not for your friends, not for anybody else, just for you. God does not make junk. Now that speaks directly to me, I feel like, you know, I feel like this message, honestly, a lot of these messages kind of speak to me directly, but, you know, it's always been, I've always struggled with low self-worth, low self-esteem, there was a long time there where it's like, I just hated the way I looked. I just, you know, based off of TV or whatever, or my friends around me, it's like, you know, God, why'd you make me this way? Why do I have the struggles that I do? Why do, you know, why do I look this way? All, all, all that. Why couldn't I be beautiful or, or whatever? But, you know, at the end of the day, God does not make junk. God does not make junk. God does not make mistakes and he most certainly does not make junk. He only makes beautifully complex and wonderful things and that includes you. So all that to say that tonight's word is a word that's very familiar here at 180. I always repeat it to uh, my students, my leaders will echo this. But the word for tonight is respect. Respect. All right. And we're going to talk about respect in two ways. The first way, the challenge for you all tonight is one, as we talk about uh, shifting our mindset when it comes to friendships. All right. First, you need to respect yourself. There's a verse in scripture talking about the two greatest commandments. Uh, saying the first greatest commandment is to love, Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. 
And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. Now there's two parts to that section, to love your neighbor as yourself. In order to love your neighbor, you need to what? Know how to love yourself. It's interesting, right? You know, how are you supposed to love your neighbor as yourself if you're not loving yourself correctly? And how do we know how to love? Based off of the example that Jesus gives us in scripture. So, first, we need to talk about respecting ourselves. So, again, respect yourself. So, you know, sure, you're different than others. But trying to be like other people, trying to be like what culture and society says you need to be, trying to be like them won't make you better because it's not making you really you. Remember, God made you beautifully complex for a very specific purpose. He made you to be you. So work on developing your strengths and work to understand and improve your weaknesses. I'm going to say that one more time, you know, for the people in the back and because I said it kind of fast, but work to develop your strengths and work to understand and improve your weaknesses. All right. So as you uh, develop that respect for yourself, as you step into that God-given purpose for your life, develop your strengths and understand and improve your weaknesses. So that's number one, respect yourself. Second, once you've learn to respect yourself, you're going to what? Respect others. Okay. It has become way too popular in our culture to only respect people with the same opinions and thinking as our own. It's funny that we come to like this message at this point in society when we're in the midst of COVID and it's election season and it's like Trump and Biden. You know, whichever side, and if you don't vote the way I vote, then we can't be friends. No. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not Christ-like, and that's not how we're called to be with each other. Culture and society would say, yeah, that's right. What scripture is saying is that we need to shift that mindset and respect others and their opinions and, you know, their thoughts and opinions. Respect means you value someone for who they are, not just what they can do for you. Respect means you believe that no one deserves to be treated poorly. Respect means you seek to understand your differences instead of tearing each other down. Respect means you try to see the potential in everyone instead of just picking on their weaknesses. Ultimately, never forget that we are all growing and developing. We are all works in progress. Especially if God is in control of your life, you can be sure that he's always going to be fine-tuning your life and shaping those rough edges of your personality. He's always going to be working on you. So to close out, I want to share this piece of scripture. And it says this in Philippians 1.6, Being confident of this, that he, God, who began a good work in you, will carry it on to completion. Let him, let God do that for you. Let that happen for you. Make that choice today that you will let God do that for you in your life. Respect yourself by working at being the real you. Not what somebody else is trying to make you uh, become not what society, not what even your family, your friends are trying to make you become, but understand that you were knit 
and created for a beautiful and specific purpose by God. Be that person. Respect yourself and be that person. And finally, respect others by trying to see the potential in them as well. And that shift will honestly change your friendships forever. So what now? My challenge to you this week, the rest of this week and just moving forward is to spend time in conversation. Get to know someone who might be a little different from you. That person you try to avoid or that person that you're like, boy, we will never be friends. And believe me, there's some people where I'm like, man, we'll never be friends. And now we're the best of friends. But my challenge to you is to approach those people and have conversation with them. Ask them questions about their life. Ask them about their family, their friends, and how they see the world. And begin that shift that hopefully, prayerfully, will change uh, your friendships forever. And that's our message for tonight. Let me go ahead and pray us out and we'll be done. Let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you for tonight, for this opportunity to get into your word. Lord, um, it's just so easy to get caught up in the expectations that people have for us and even the expectations that we have for other people, Lord. And I pray that you would just remove that from us and allow us to see, you know, first ourselves for who we really are. And that's your beautiful creation well, with a specific purpose, Father. I pray that if there's anybody right now who finds themselves, you know, hating who they are, or, you know, wishing there were somebody else, Lord, I pray that you would just remove those lies from their life Help them to acknowledge those things as lies and just dismiss those completely and have them dwell on the truth that they were fearfully and wonderfully made, that you very intentionally created each and every one of them with a specific, beautiful purpose, Lord. I pray that they would just really just take to that truth. Lord, and I also pray that you would just give everybody the courage to reach out to people who are different from them, to be the light in the world, to be the light in these people's lives and reflect your glory and your love to uh, people who might be different from them, who may need to hear a kind, loving word uh, from someone. Lord, I pray that you would just give this group courage and wisdom um, to do that. Uh, this coming week. Lord, again, we thank you for this time, this precious time just to get together and get into your word, Lord. We love you. We thank you. And we pray this all in your son's name. And everybody said, amen. Thank you all for joining me tonight and can't wait to see you all next week. Love you guys. Peace. <laughs>